Hey everyone! Today we're continuing our discussion of Kirchhoff's laws. We took a look at an example of this in our last video, but what we're going to look at here is how to apply Kirchhoff's law specifically when you have a current source rather than a voltage source that's involved. So we're going to follow the same procedures that we followed last time, but we're going to see there's some subtle differences along the way. So here's our example. We can see that we have one voltage source over here, 12 volts, and one 4 amp current source, and then we've got a bunch of resistors in the middle. First step we always want to do is label our junctions. As we said, junctions are going to be the points where your circuit is going to branch. So we'll label our two junctions, doesn't matter which one is J1 and J2. Next we can assign our current directions. Now be careful here, this current from the current source already has a direction, you can see the arrow in there. So we don't need to give this a separate label. We know what its value is, we know its direction. So you just need to worry about the other paths along the circuit. So we're going to call this I1, and we'll go up through here, I2. Remember that these directions and the naming conventions are arbitrary. I'm just choosing to follow this loop around clockwise. Now once we do this, we can label the positive and negative sides of all the resistors and batteries. So remember, whatever the current hits first is going to be positive, and the battery has its own positive and negative terminals, so follow what's assigned there. So now we've labeled everything. So now we can write our node law, pick a junction. I'm going to choose junction 1, but it doesn't matter. And again, we'll make the assumption that currents coming into a junction are negative, going out are positive. But again, that's arbitrary as well. So we have, at junction 1, the 4 amp current coming in, so negative 4 amps. We have I2 coming in, so minus I2. And we have I1 coming out, so plus I1. All total equals 0. Let's move those negative values over, and we end up with I1. It's 4 amps, plus I2. Which will be our node equation for here. If we look at the second junction, we see that that gives us the same result. We have I1 coming in, I2, and the 4 amps going out. So now we assign loop directions. Remember that we need n minus 1 loops. And if we look at our diagram, we could have a loop on each side of the internal and then we could have a loop going around the entire circuit. But you have to be careful here again. The loop on the left only has a current source. It has no voltage source. And we are finding loop direction because we're concerned with solving for Kirchhoff's voltage law. The loops have to do with voltages. So since there's no voltage source in the left-hand loop, we cannot count it as one of our loops and we can't use it for our KVL calculation. So really, n, the number of loops, is just 2, the outer loop and the loop on the right. So n minus 1 is just 1, so our job is a little simpler here. We only have to pick one loop. You can pick the outer loop or you can pick the right-hand loop. Personally, I always choose the interior, it just seems easier to me. So we'll call this loop A. So now we have our one loop, and we have all of our currents labeled, we have all of our terminals labeled on everything. So let's write our KVL equation through loop A. And this is the only loop we have to consider. We'll start at junction 1. Remember, we're using V equals IR. And if we're going from positive to negative through the loop direction, that's assigned a negative voltage value. So if we start at J1, the first thing we hit is that 6 ohm resistor. So its current is I1. It's negative, because it's going from positive to negative. So it's I1, and it's 6 ohms. V equals IR. Next we hit our voltage source. Again, that's going from positive to negative, so it's negative 12 volts. Now we come up, we hit junction 2, we come up through the 4 ohm resistor. Again, that's going from positive to negative. Our current is I2. Our resistance is 4 ohms. And lastly, we have a negative I2 times 2 ohms equals 0. So if we write that out a little bit nicer, we'll get rid of some of the units. We have negative 6 I1 minus 12 volts minus 4 I2 
minus 2i to equals 0. You could obviously move some of these over to make them positive. You can combine these terms to make 6i2. So now our two equations here, this is our node law. This is our loop law. And as I just said, we can combine these two. We can make this negative 6i2 to make it a little bit easier. So now we have two equations. We have two unknowns. Should be pretty easy to solve. I would start with the equation on the right. So we have negative 6i1 minus 12 minus 6i2 equals 0. And here is a little bit different than last time. What we're going to do is we're going to substitute in for i1. So we know that i1 is 4 plus i2. So we have negative 24 minus 6i2 minus 12 minus 6i2 equals 0. 24 minus 12, negative 36. Negative 6, negative 6, minus 12i2 equals 0. So negative 36 equals 12i2. And you could see pretty easily that i2, 36 divided by 12, is negative 3. Again, the negative here is indicating that we put our loop in the wrong direction. So the current for i2 should have been in the opposite direction. Now you can take that value, plug it right back into this equation. It's probably the simplest way to solve. So we have 4 plus i2 equals i1. So 4 minus 3 is i1. i1 is 1 amp. This is negative 3 amps. And there we have our values. Now, if we want to find the voltages through our resistors, all we would have to do is use V equals IR, like we did in the last video. Multiply this current by whichever resistor it's flowing through, and you'll get your voltage. So again, we labeled our junction points. We assigned directions for the current arbitrarily. We wrote our node law at a particular junction point. We assigned loop directions. We had to keep in mind that we couldn't make a loop through the the loop in the circuit that only had a current source, didn't have any voltage sources. So we wrote our single loop equation then, and we solved. Enjoying these videos? Follow the links in the description below to find out how you could reach out for personal tutoring, like and subscribe to get notified when new videos drop, and comment with suggestions for future topics.